GoPro's app ProTune update for the GoPro is out, random musings, more passbook uses, Angry Birds goes Star Wars, iPod Touch, 5th Gen tidbits, and the cloned lightning chip. It's Wednesday, October 10th, 2012, and this is iWake. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of iWake. There is quite a bit going on today, and some stories that I'm very excited to report on because they're stories that I've been waiting to, for them to happen for a long, long time. So the first bit of news is GoPro. GoPro has two awesome things that came out. First up is their GoPro app. The app is free to download. It, uh, for those that don't have the GoPro or the GoPro backpack for Wi-Fi, it shows you the GoPro photo of the day and video of the day. And it also, for those that, uh, the main use of this app is for those that actually own the GoPro camera and the GoPro Wi-Fi backpack. It enables full camera control and live scene preview for easy frame shots uh, on smartphones and tablets. Uh, so it's for iPad, and I believe uh, it's for iPhone, definitely, and I believe it's universal for iPad. So that is out now. Just search for GoPro, and it's in the App Store. The other bit of news is ProTune. The firmware update for the GoPro 2 is now out. ProTune enables really high-definition recording on the GoPro. Basically, this unleashes the full potential of the camera. Up until now, we've been able to do some cool recording, but haven't been able to do everything that the camera is capable of. And this also will do color matching with Canon cameras, and uh, they worked with Tech9 Color to achieve all this. So it's up n out now if you just attach your GoPro to your computer, load up the um, their application from the Mac or Windows, you'll be able to get updated and all set with the ProTune update. So that's GoPro news. Next up, I've got some random musings. Um, some random music. So what first up is um, the dis amazing insight that I had today that 1080p, 1080p content from iTunes is often smaller than dual layer DVDs. And they look fantastic. And that's all done because of the new encoding technologies, the new compression technologies that enables us to have full out 1080p video that looks fantastic, but in a smaller size. DVDs, as you know, come in uncompressed format versus the downloads in iTunes, which are optimized for this downloadable format, and it's done in a really sleek way. And I've actually noticed that file sizes are able to be smaller, but have better form, uh, better quality and better resolution. So that's just something I noticed that DVDs, which are SD, are around 7 to 8 gigs versus this really awesome stuff is, you know, 4 or 5 gigs, maybe more, but... Uh, rarely above 8 or 9 gigs for 1080p content. Um, so that's just something I, I just uh, f discovered there. Another thing I had a thought on is Twitter uh, versus app.net. Twitter may, for me, become the ultimate news source of everyone I follow there and just keeping up with news versus app.net. I have not joined it yet, but that may become the social network where I actually communicate with friends. So there may be a difference there between Twitter being news, app.net, being the social component. So that's just a thought I had there. Next up is a tip I uh, heard today on Mac Break Weekly. Uh, when you're an inspector on Pages, Numbers, Keynote, iBooks, Author, if you option click on different tabs while you're in an, in an inspector, you'll have different inspector windows you're able to have up there. Pretty useful for those that use the inspector and want more than one window. Uh, lastly today in my random musings is the fact that E.T. is now on iTunes, and the cool thing here is they've only left one thing off from the iTunes Extra version that is not on the Blu-ray. So E.T. journals are not in the iTunes version, but everything else is. Um, the Amazon release notes say it's uh, Blu-ray exclusive, so they make a point of saying that. So a good job on the iTunes release for including most of everything there. Uh, this now brings E.T., Jaws, and Indiana Jones all up into the iTunes ecosystem. And uh, we're getting close to having all the big classics from Spielberg on iTunes. So it's, hey, it's exciting. Um, no, another thing to note is that the Bond movies are back to normal prices at $15 for HD, $10 for SD. It was a really quick sale. So if you missed it, you lost it. The sale was from Friday to Monday only. I did manage to pick up all 20 three 2022 20, films, the Bond series, so I own all of those and managed to pick those up while they're on sale, so uh, I'm glad I did that. Otherwise, it'd be double the price that I paid for it. 
Uh, lastly, Vampire Hunter is following the same model Prometheus did. It's from Fox and has that $15 early entry, the $15 price, and comes early. So Vampire Hunter, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, is doing the same model Prometheus did. And I'm excited to see uh, Fox follow suit and continue to offer this better release model for their digital content. So with all of those random musings, let's move on to Siri and Passbook. First up is, I believe Dan Morin tweeted out a rather funny thing to ask Siri. Who let the dogs out? Siri responds, who, 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 who? So um, if you want to ask Siri something, that's a fun thing to ask. Now, uh, Passbook. Passbook has some cool things. Uh, first up, Value Pack has a new update to their app. Instead of adding hundreds of coupons to your Passbook, you are, then, you are instead taken through a list of coupons that might be relevant to you. And once you find a coupon you want it, you just simply add that to Passbook through the share option. So they use a share menu item, like you can mail, message, Twitter, Facebook things, you know, add to, to Passbook, which is a cool thing for them to add. The other bit of Passbook news is flonsolutions.com. So F-L-O-N solutions.com. They have all these great uh, novelty Passbook items to just delight you and uh, to uh, just, have, they're kind of just fun novelties. So on my Passbook, I've added a few things here. I have added... The VSS Enterprise, Spaceport America, the Final Frontier. Um, I've added the RMS Titanic, uh, deporting from Southampton, going to New York City. I've got Oceanic Flight 815, and uh, I've got all sorts of just um, a fun different just uh, passbook entries. I've got the Star Wars, uh, Man's Chinese Theater, May 25th, 1977. And these are fully... Uh, they look functional, but they're not because they are old events and historical events. But that's at flonsolutions.com. They do offer passbook solutions for those interested in that for their business. Uh, now, uh, on to the one app story of the day, and that is Angry Birds for Star Wars. It is coming out November 8th, and this sounds pretty exciting. According to Peter Vestabaka, the CMO of Rovio, this is the best Angry Birds game we've ever done. It's the best part of Angry Birds with all new cutting-edge gameplay set in a galaxy far, far away. As a big Angry Birds fan, I'm really excited about this new universe. Force is definitely strong with this one. So what I'm curious to see is if we can blow up Jar Jar Binks in this one. I want to see if that can happen. Uh, that would make a lot of fans happy, I'm sure. So anyway, it's November 8th, and I'm excited to see what they do with this one. I, as many others are, am a huge Star Wars fan. Now, closing up the show today is some hardware-related news. First up the note, my iPod Nano has shipped out, and hopefully I'll get it this week or early next week. Uh, very exciting news there. And uh, secondly, the note is that the iPods are shipping with different ear pods. So we are not getting microphones or click wheels or click clickers with our, with our uh, headsets. Instead, they are simplified, just ear pods, with no mic or remote. This is applied for both the Nano and the Touch. This saddens me, but it makes sense to cut costs however they can. Um, so if you were hoping to get the full featured earpods, you are wrong. You will have to buy those separately for $30. They do give you earpods, but they are slimmed down versions. Uh, they did this before in the prior Nano and the prior Touch. Um, so this is not new news as far as uh, breaking any precedences, but uh, sad news indeed. It, it will be, um, it, just, it just adds more complication that there's two lines of ear pods out there. The other bit of news is uh, regarding the iPod Touch 5th generation. Evidently, there is no ambient light sensor, meaning the automatic brightness is not a thing for the iPod Touch 5th generation. This has been a part of the iPod Touch since its inception, I believe. It's definitely, was, it's definitely in the 4th generation and not in the 5th generation. Now, it's really sad because iOS 6 makes ambient light sensing so sexy. When you turn on your iPhone, it gradually bl blossoms up into the light. And that's a cool thing. And it's really sad to see that Apple took that out of the fifth generation iPod. As It's a beautiful thing for iOS 6, and now the hardware doesn't support it. So, yeah, it's just a weird thing that hopefully they add back to the iPod a year later. Uh, next up is the, uh, the fact that the playbook has been discontinued. It's disappearing from store shelves, and it appears that perhaps they may be doing a second generation or maybe discontinued altogether. 
Lastly, the lightning chip for these lightning uh, cables. Th there's a chip that authenticates it and tells the cable what to do. Well, that chip has been duplicated and is going to be basically allowing for non made for iPhone cables. That is unless Apple starts to sue them and get them out of business. According to TUAW, manufacturer iPhone 5 mod has announced the $40 flash lightning dock, which includes a very cool glowing cable, complete with LEDs that change whenever the iPhone 5 is charging or syncing. But there's more. According to MIC Gadget, the lights actually change speed based on the battery capacity of the iPhone, with the animated lights moving quicker the lower the battery charge is. And finally, stopping motion lights off when the iPhone 5 is fully charged. So it's pretty cool stuff they're able to do, and um, this is all done through unofficial means. So this is happening, and I'm curious if Apple will shut these down. So with that said, that's what's going on in the Apple world today. You can check out the show notes at iwakepodcast.com. I also do videos over at youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. And finally, if you'd like access to the script as well as bonus content, head over to iwakepodcast.com slash again. Um, that's where you get show notes as well as, or that's where you get full access to scripts as well as uh, bonus content on Saturdays. That's iwakepodcast.com slash again. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. I'll be back for another episode tomorrow. That said, thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to everyone again real soon. Aloha.